today I'm here to show you the Bangkok that the world knows. It's nothing different to what is already out there on YouTube, but it's from my perspective. And today we're going through central Bangkok. I'm currently standing in front of the MBK Center. In front of me is CM Discovery. And in this section of Bangkok, let's call it the central section, are most of the shopping malls, high-end shopping malls, and also mid to low range shopping malls as well, where you can get yourself a bargain. When I first came to Bangkok in June 2004, and we did a tour of Bangkok as a young man, as a 24 year old, and what we found was Bangkok back then was very local. A lot of local markets, there was none of these big skyscrapers and overhead rail and what you see today, which looks like or it could be Tokyo, it could be Korea, it could be Singapore, this could be anywhere. So Bangkok, Thailand has come a long way over the years and it's evolved into this metropolis of shopping and restaurants and food and fun and laughter. It's very different. I remember the MBK Centre back in the day and it was very different, it was very local. There was tuk-tuks out the front, uh, some of the areas weren't as built up and there was just a whole heap of people hanging around the MBK Centre because that was probably one of the few malls that were considered to be high-end back in the day or exciting. Now there's malls and restaurants everywhere, it's changed so much. We're touring today, we're touring Bangkok. I'm going to show you Bangkok City from my perspective. Let's go have a look. This is an Asian 3XL, but I still don't believe that it will fit me. If this is 3XL, I'll need 10XL. I'm at the Topps Food Court down the bottom here at the MBK Centre. And they're really making good use of the floor space here. There's markets everywhere. So not only are there shops, when they set up these markets in the areas where there used to be dead space there's everything from you know curing baldness to glowing white to collagen cream to Burberry's and the Chanel's and all that type of stuff look at this shoppers heaven in the happy smiley market Really good, can't get bored here. This is my favorite little place I come to every time I'm in the MBK Center. So you gotta come down to the ground floor and then right at the back, there's a food court. And it's near the Topps Food Court. And this place makes the best noodles. I come here each time and I got the boat noodles this time. It's crazy good. It's like a little store. I think a husband and wife run the place. It's nothing fancy, but it doesn't have to be because this is the great thing about Bangkok. You can have fancy pantsy and then you can have simple. I like the simple. So for about $4, you get a bowl of noodles and you get to enjoy the local atmosphere. I'll show you a little bit around shortly. Let me enjoy my noodles first because I don't know when I'll be back. So Thai people generally don't eat with chopsticks. The use of chopsticks came later on into Thailand when the Chinese immigrated here. 
and they brought along their foods like the noodles and so forth. Traditionally, Thais ate with their hands and everything has ever been bite-sized. So they pick it up with their hand and eat it and you don't need to cut it, you don't need to kind of halve it, quarter it, you don't need to do anything to it. You don't need to scoop it, you eat with your hands. These days, obviously the Thais prefer to eat with fork and spoon, but if you do uh, go ahead and have a noodle dish, they will provide you with uh, some of these chopsticks to eat your food. And don't ever ask for a knife in Thailand because once again, everything is bite-sized and it doesn't need to be cut. It's good to go. crossing the bridge now we're going over into the back end of Central World and down here is where the markets start so we're leaving behind the big fashion malls and we're moving into local areas where you can get bargains on clothing souvenirs handbags trainers whatever you want there's an area called Indra Square and that's where we're heading So we're inside city complex. Think of an outdoor market that's both indoor and outdoor, and that will complete your thinking around what kind of place this is. This place is massive, humongous. Heaps of different things on sale here from different types of people. So there's people who are selling things from Nepal, India, Bangladesh, uh, obviously Thai, uh, Thai people. It's just so busy. It's just a bit of everything. Once again, nothing for me, really. It's uh, just, I don't know, not my type of things to buy. But then again, I am fussy. Let's keep walking. We're in the city square now. It's really busy up ahead. Check this out. There's signs everywhere here. Be careful of your belongings. Uh, so turn your backpack around and put it in front of you because apparently there's pickpocketers and apparently the pickpocketers are from different countries and so the sign says, but look, it could be anyone. Don't want to pin the blame on a particular race of people. But we're going in, flip your bag around, go in and have some fun. Wow, this place is busy. You need a lot of patience in here. It's really hard to move. <clears throat> There's motorbikes coming through. There's people begging. It's just, wow, there's people pushing suitcases, trolleys, you name it. Be patient and you'll be able to get through. Be impatient and you might find yourself in trouble. If someone coughs on you, sneezes on you, bumps into you, uh, 
nudges you to smile and keep walking. You don't want to get into an issue in here. This really is old school Bangkok and I love it. This is what I want to see. I want to see the grimy stuff, the raw stuff, the local stuff. This is what I want to see. I don't want to see big shopping malls that are glamorous and shiny and expensive. That's not for me. This is it. You want to see tuk-tuks, you want to see old diesel cars and you know people just hustling and bustling amongst it all. Little markets, cheap stuff. That's it. That's what Bangkok is to me. And that's why I love this area. So right behind Central World and the big shopping malls is the Diamond Square Indra Market. It's all in the one area here. You gotta visit this place. You will absolutely love it. And it'll take you back to Bangkok in the 70s and 80s. Indra Market, the Pratana Market, the Diamond Complex, all of these places are on the site of Watergate. And Watergate is the original place where the Thais and obviously other traders have been trading in textiles and other goods since the 1960s. So this is the reason why there's so many markets here because it's continuing on in the tradition of trade particularly in textiles when you look around the most sold commodities are textiles and over the years other things have moved themselves in as well like watches and electronics so this area known as Watergate includes the Indra market Pratna Market, Diamond Complex, and all of the other markets in the area. It's a very famous area, and in particular this one, uh, the Indra Market has a lot of Indian traders here, hence the name Indra. And a lot of people come here from India to buy a lot of goods for cheap. So I'm here on the abandoned railway tracks here in Plonchit, underneath this big bridge, which is an overpass. 
and that road there is uh, Sukhumvit Road and I've always walked past this area and these tracks no doubt abandoned because there's no trains that come through here just go all the way down and there's all these little stores on either side and I believe it's a photographer's dream or a videographer's dream just to come down here and get some nice photos I just had a bit of a walk up there and it gets quite green there's trees up there and uh, it kind of leads off into another suburb possibly Asok I'm not sure don't quote me on that one but there's actually people living and, and running little stores on either side of these tracks you see the odd motorbike go up and down and people walking back and forth with groceries and it's quiet it's actually really nice up there but if I turn around and then this is where all the chaos is so you've got the main road that crosses the tracks here and it goes all the way up up to Sukhumvit into the busy areas interesting part of the world this is what I like about Bangkok there's all these uh, areas of the yesteryears that you can come and explore and they haven't changed in years so there's there's these tracks here there's people living on either side of the tracks in the middle of in the middle of this big apple or this big city we should say and you just kind of walk 20 minutes that way and or not even 20 minutes even two minutes and it just becomes really quiet and peaceful and people are there just kind of doing the everyday thing it's really nice uh, I like these little pockets of Bangkok where people lead a different life that's very different to what's happening in the big smoke some might say these people could be underprivileged I don't know I don't know the history of this area but when I look at it I just see it in the sense that this is the old Bangkok and in front of me is the new Bangkok and I like making that contrast in lifestyles and how cities and urban areas change and become different over time and that's what interests me so I'd like to go further up there but it's a little bit hard to walk on these rocks because the rocks are quite big and it's obviously a train track it's not made to be uh, stepped on or to you know to be used as a pathway I also don't want to impede on people's privacy because it's quite private down that way so I'll stick to the main road but if you're in Plonchit here in the uh, next to the Sukhumvit area check this place out just walk down a little bit and have a look and I can see there's a sign there saying Vadana district area so this could help Radio. I'm here at my favorite kebab shop or shawarma store in Bangkok so whenever I come to Bangkok I come to this place here shawarma Mahmud it's number one I love the shawarma here shukran thank you brother and the drink please the drink Schweppes. Schweppes I always come and have my shawarma here because the food once again as it is in uh, Kuala Lumpur it's marinated in tahini and I love it. It's got the best taste. It's just turned up. The shawarma nation is right here. We're ready to eat. Let's dig into it. Let's not waste any time. Got the shawarma here, beef shawarma. <laughs> you guys have no idea. It melts in your mouth. It's zesty. It's a zesty kebab. It's like it's been marinated in beef, uh, lemon juice, and there's a kick to it as well. It's spicy. Oh, 
can't beat it, guys. You really cannot beat it. I reckon I can eat about four of these. But I won't. Look at that. The other good thing about this kebab is the bread is thin. And as the bread is thin, you really taste the meat when you eat it. Great, look at that. I'm in heaven at the moment. I'll come a bit closer. I really am in heaven. Thin bread, chock full of beef shawarma, beef kebab, a bit of tabbouleh, zesty lemon flavour, and it's got a bit of a kick to it as well. It's uh, made it spicy. Very good. So this place, Shawarma Mahmoud, open daily, 1pm to 4am, and it's in Soy Arab, here in Sukhumvit, near Nana. You gotta check it out. For the guys and girls that are really hungry, probably eat two of these easy. I thought I'd walk away a little bit from Sukhumvit and I walked around the back and now I'm in Nassau and look behind me I've come across this marketplace which is huge there's vendors everywhere and I think it's one of those places where all the workers come and eat and as far as the eye can see there's food look at that and this is just like one part of it there's another section around the back it's absolutely huge. The smells of the different foods and you know the noise and the hustle and bustle just makes it amazing. I don't know how good the food is but you know what we're gonna have to try the food since we're here. I was tempted to eat Western food. Lucky I didn't because I took another 10 steps and I found this place. The smells are so enticing so I'm gonna go in there and start exploring and see what suits my taste palette. I'll have to take a few risks as well, but that's all right, that's part of the fun. Let's get in there, let's eat. So just a word of warning, there's not much English here, so you gotta look at the pictures and decipher what you're reading. Uh, not many people speak English here either, although there is a few, but all the signage, everything's in Thai, so learn Thai, so you know what you're reading, or, take out your Google Translator and translate everything and then have a read because even if you ask questions you might not get the right answer I didn't get the right answer before but that's alright we averted a crisis so 
not much in Thai, it's more for the locals. Keep that in mind, or go learn some Thai and you'll be okay. Don't be mistaken for a Sunday market, guys. This is Monday, mid-afternoon. This is the lunch rush, look at that. Not many seats available to sit down. So I've walked into the other dining area. And this is it, this is the midday rush. People working and rushing to come and get their food. And boy, do they have a choice of foods. Cheap as well. Look at the lines behind me. You need to be patient. I think the good places have got the lines. Some are about 10 deep. Look at that. So it's not as quick to get your food as you think. Whereas on the other hand, you have some other stores that are a little bit more quiet. Might be a better option to go for something over here. But these ones must be really good if people are waiting that long. I wouldn't wait that long. You know, no amount of food or no cuisine is worth the wait for that long. But Asians do it, they love waiting. They love queuing up. All types of stores behind me. A lot of soups, a lot of noodles. Duck, pork, beef. Let's go down this way. bought the salad for 60 baht which is about uh, three dollars maybe just under three dollars Australian it's got chicken it's got egg it's got uh, crab cucumber celery tomato carrot this is like an entree I just discovered that it also has noodle in the middle so that's pretty good quite impressive and there's a fair bit of it as well cold noodle maybe soba noodles I think they're called Japanese noodles I could be wrong we've got a chicken pastry now uh, 10 baht each I got two for 20 baht looks to be deep fried but you know we'll give it a go Chicken. There's a bit of sugar in there, but that's alright. It's a bit like a pastizzi. They keep insisting to put it in another plastic bag and another plastic bag. I don't know what the obsession with the plastic bags are. And then he wanted to staple it, so I said, no, 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 that's right. Just hand it over as it is. All good. Ten baht each. It's nice. Let's see what else there is. Is it a sweet or is it for food? Dessert? Okay. Eat together. Fantastic. Deep fried chives. I'm sure there's sugar in there as well. Maybe a bit of something else. The young gentleman tried to explain it, but he did his best. I don't think English is his uh, forte. He did say it's like a dessert. So let's try this. He said it's good with the sauce, but I'll try it without the sauce first. Oh wow, very chivey and smoky. The outside tastes like um, rice paper roll. Uh, if you've ever had the rice paper roll with the vermicelli noodles. But 
maybe fried or smoked or something and inside I guess are the chives so we'll dip that in the sauce the sweet and sour sauce let's see how we go okay it pairs well the smokiness and the sweet and sour sauce pairs well one cup is too much for one person you can probably share it between two or three people that's my advice Wow, what a market we got here. Good find. Definitely a good find today. It's emptied out now. Have a look at this. Back to work. Back into the matrix for everyone. Not for me. <laughs> out of the matrix. Good, go to work. Just me and the bludgers now. So that's the wrap guys from the market so for under a hundred baht which is about four dollars something Australian we had the salad we had the chive dumplings we had the chicken pastizzis or the chicken pastries and we had the fruit off to the next destination now what a great find alrighty we have a special guest that I came across while walking down uh, a song just uh, earlier and would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, hi guys, uh, my name is Kayan. I'm from Hong Kong, but uh, I've been living in Thailand for about six years. And I'm a content creator. Uh, my website is daydreamer.biz. And so uh, basically you can find all the local food information from the website, as well as some local snacks and such. So yeah. So do you do this full time or is it a hobby at the moment? Um, I would say it's a hobby at the moment, but I am so curious about um, how and where it can get me to and so yeah i'm so excited to explore it awesome and you said you've been in bangkok for seven years yes but that's a long time what what has compelled to keep you here in bangkok um i would say the hustle and bustle since um, i'm a city girl i'm from i'm from another you know like city in the world and um you will never get bored in bangkok because there's so many things ongoing every day and yeah. the diversity it's just fascinating awesome yeah well, so the best. <laughs> thank you so much yeah, yeah. yeah. Good luck with everything thank and you. we hope to see you at the top one day thank you sadika <laughs> come down here to the canals I've decided I'm gonna take a boat tour down these canals in Bangkok I've done it once before but I only got to do a few stops so now I'm hoping to do like all seven and I can see that there's seven stops wherever it takes me I don't care it says a hundred baht up so I'm guessing a hundred baht back I'm happy to stay on the on the boat <laughs> and let it take me all the way up and then let it bring me back I don't care I need to see the canals. I had a good experience last time and I know I'll have another good experience today. If I see something good, I'll, I'll jump off and have a look and see what's happening. There's one going past now. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what is down that side. I think this is the start. I think this is one. So let's see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? This is what it looks like on board. Very low rise. So you got a duck. That's the motor. Don't sit next to the motor. It's not good for you. You'll get a headache and you'll cop the fumes. Let's go this way.
told him that I want to go all the way to the end and he charged me 14 baht so look that's not much at all that's about 70 cents 80 cents Australian so I'm just gonna stay on even if I see anywhere along the way that I like I'll just get off no big deal it's nice and cool though I'm quite enjoying I decided to get off at the markets. Looks quite good here. There's interesting houses on the other side of the market, and on this side in front of me is where all the vendors are. Looked quite pleasant. I just made a rash decision. I said, hey, I'm getting off here. I saw this place last time as well, and I didn't get off, and I regretted it. Let me check it out, and I'll give you my feedback. This has got to be the most popular pair of pants in Thailand everybody sells it and just about everybody buys it including tourists it's just everywhere elephant pants I don't know if I've got off at the right spot but for some reason a majority of the clothes in this market are female underwear bras underwear you name it, undergarments. So maybe I've just walked into the wrong section. Yeah, it's a bit odd. <laughs> I'll keep looking around, see what I can find. This place is about seven levels, and I'm really looking for something to buy, but I can't find anything. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not you know, mixed mixed opinions about this place. I'm going down the escalator. I don't know. It, the clothing is just a bit not right for me. It's uh, uniforms and basic designs and kind of mass-produced and just kind of souvenir type of clothing with the random patterns and things on there but it might be for you might be worth checking out there's a lot to see here t-shirts polos a lot of polos then you got like other t-shirts like this with like random designs and i don't know not my cup of tea, really. Kind of super dry look. Probably worth checking out, though, if you really want. There's a lot in here. Just a stone throw away from the dazzling lights of Sukhumvit and the busyness of Sukhumvit, I believe I've stumbled upon a pocket suburb. A pocket suburb, or we could call it a little village, similar to Kampung Baru. So is this the Kampung Baru of Bangkok? As we all know, Kampung Baru is a village in the heart of Kuala Lumpur that is untouched and res 
resembles the yesteryears of Malaysia. What I've found here today is the equivalent right here on Alley 4 in Bangkok, in the heart of Bangkok. So there's a bit of traffic that passes through here, but on either side of here, it is generally less busy. And the architecture, the houses, and everything in this area looks like it's from the 50s or 60s. You've got little doors, you've got these little wooden homes with little wooden balconies and terraces. It is amazing. It is very different to what is just down the road. And just like Kampung Baru, if you look up there, you'll see that this area as well is overcrowded or has big high-rise skyscrapers towering above. So the same thing is happening here, but it looks like this pocket village has held out. And it's doing a good job of holding up because it's got its own little vibe happening. It's got its own little industry. You have washing machines, you have massage places, but there's nothing in English or very little. It's all in Thai and it runs its own little ecosystem here in the heart of Bangkok, right under those big skyscrapers, which are a stone throw away. Crazy stuff. And this is what I love about these Asian cities. They all have, or they all seem to have little pocket areas, suburbs, villages, kampungs that resemble the past and they stand still in time. So will this place ever get uh, gentrified and catch up with the rest of Bangkok? Maybe one day, I don't know. I hope it doesn't because as a tourist, as someone who travels, this is what I look for. I look for these type of places so I don't have to be subject to what I already have in Melbourne and Australia and in the rest of the Western world. This is why I travel to find these pocket area gems. And I'm so glad I found this place today because all I did was I went for a bit of a walk around the corner from my hotel and I found this place. So I'm sure there's many other places as well like this but you just gotta search for it and sometimes you need to be a bit lucky. I don't think you can search this place online and find it. There's no chance. This place can only be found through locals or I guess you need to be lucky like me today and just stumble across it. And I'm so glad I've done that because I haven't seen anything like this in Bangkok yet and I feel privileged to see it. A lot of motorbikes going through in and out. It's still early, but I think it's rush hour. So a lot of motorbikes are cutting through these back streets. Locals, they know the shortcuts. And they are taking advantage of the area. Here we go, I've just stumbled across what I believe are some concepts for this area. And it looks as though there's been some consultations and support from the community to develop this area. And 
at the tip of my finger right there there's a few different concepts what seems to be for this area so maybe just maybe it looks as though they might be planning to develop this area a little bit more and there's some funky concepts here with what seems to be this water area here to turn it into something nice so maybe the thoughts are already there to have this area redeveloped i hope they keep a piece of the traditional banker in their design but that's not up to me that's for the locals to decide but there seems to be a lot of happy faces there and a bit of consultation Sawari Cup, how are we all doing? I'm at the Movenpick rooftop, which is known as the Rainforest rooftop. And it's not a bad little place actually. It's not too big, but it's nice. Look, it's got an awesome pool here. Uh, I've got to be careful not to step over the edge or else I'll go head first. But there's a nice pool here that kind of wraps around the side as well. Very nice amongst the buildings that we have here in the Sukhumvit area we're surrounded by skyscrapers high rises all around us but there's a rainforest garden theme that's happening here and it's really nice it's really quiet it, look it's not the highest of rooftops it's probably eight stories high yep yeah, level eight or maybe nine including ground floor so it's not too high but it's really nice it's quiet here it's, there's a nice bar over there and there's all these areas that are very exactly that rainforest type so there's grass here there's trees there's shrubs and they've given it a really good theme and it's not expensive to come up here it's free and you don't even have to buy a drink you can buy a drink if you like I just bought one buy one get one free but look at this you can kind of come up here and just sunbathe in the in the pool on any of these banana chairs no, I'll take you on a bit of a tour around the place so you can see what it's like exactly look at that you've got kind of like wild grass and you know you've got more sunbeds here as well amongst the skyscrapers it's really nice this is just one area of it it wraps around I particularly like this area because what it has are the lotus flowers here in the water and then there's these cabanas behind me where you can hang out and at night this place will be beautiful especially uh, since there's a cool breeze that's coming through the area now in the late uh, mid-afternoon let's go in the cabana really peaceful really nice there's a bit of wind but it's okay just a bit of a breeze I should say you can hang out here all night with a group of friends no problems at all you know it won't be an expensive night for you and this is the thing that I love about Thailand nothing is expensive everything is uh, very cost uh, effective and affordable and you don't need hundreds or thousands of dollars like Australia or anywhere else like the States or the UK to enjoy this or even Europe these days uh, everything's really expensive there so it's fairly kind of straightforward enjoy your time with friends look at that beautiful 
and then in the distance on this side you have the skyscrapers and you have the view of Bangkok at night which is amazing once the lights come on still a little bit early now it's only quarter to four uh, in the mid-afternoon but pretty soon the lights will start coming on and that's when everything looks really nice what do you think guys is it a winner So I'm not in Manhattan, I'm not in New York, I'm not at the top, top of the rock. I am in Bangkok. I am at the Belga restaurant at the Sofitel here in Sukhumvit. And look at the view. Look at that view. It definitely can be mistaken to be New York, but it's not. It's Bangkok, it's beautiful Bangkok. Wow. This place, I never knew this place existed until I saw it online not long ago and I thought, you know what? This place is just down the road from me, I'm going there. And boy, did I make the right decision. This place has an awesome view and the sun is setting behind me. You can literally see the subway system, the rail system. You can see like the business district in the background. Great views. And this is actually a Belgian restaurant. It's called Belga and this evening I'm having Belgian cuisine. Yum yum. So what am I eating here at the Belga Belgian restaurant? I'm eating an apple and I'm eating a salad, apple salad, fries, frites. You gotta like this. The sauces are in a little egg carton and then little eggs, little fake eggshells. Very innovative. Enjoying a meal up in the clouds, level 32 at the sofa tower. So, I want to show you some landmarks. See that there? That park? That's Benjakiti Park. One of the biggest parks in Bangkok. And if we look over here, that's Lumpini Park. Also one of the biggest parks used for sporting and recreational activities in Bangkok. So both that one and that one, they're very famous parks, probably the two biggest parks in Bangkok and kind of the lungs of Bangkok because there's a lot of trees there, there's a lot of greenery, the wildlife, uh, monitor lizards can be found there as well, birds, squirrels, you name it, found here in Lumpini Park and Benjakiti Park. So being up here gives you good perspective of what Bangkok is all about and what's happening. And if I draw a parallel to what I saw in Kuala Lumpur, 
I could see a few Kampung Barus or two out in the distance, which I think whoever owns that land is sitting on a gold mine here in the heart of Bangkok. So there's a fair bit of Bangkok that's been developed and no doubt it's all going upwards. So this will be the new New York of the uh, of Asia. So whoever's got access to like these blocks, empty blocks, are going to make a lot of money and I think someone's just sitting on it and waiting for the right price. If you look behind me, you'll see some of the low rise areas right here. They're going to make a lot of money. A lot, a lot, a lot of money. Look at that. It's going upwards all around me. So, happy times for some people out there. Bangkok, the place to be.